Hey guys, Alex here from alexfigures.com and today I am doing my full review of the Lightpath LED Large Multi-Wave Pulse Body Panel. Now I've been using this panel for about a month now. Uh, I have read everything on the website about this product and uh, even spoken to the guy who created this panel and it is quite an interesting, unique red light therapy device. So I'm excited to share my feedback, my thoughts and um, also I'm going to be doing all my testing with my EMF meter, my sound meter and my spectrometer. So I'm going to be testing things like flicker rate, um, power, peak power, radiance levels, we're going to do a full breakdown looking at price and value, we're going to see how it compares to other products in the light path LED product range and also how it compares to its competitors. Um, we're going to take a deep deep dive all right all right so stick around and let's see how this unique red light therapy panel performs all right so first up what do you need to know about light path led well it's a relatively new company in the red light therapy space and it was set up by a guy named scott kennedy he is a laser light specialist with a background um, using laser to help help with pain and recovery and he also has a wellness clinic in the state so he has gone out and um he saw what was out there in the red light therapy space and he wanted to find, well he wanted to create something that was a little bit better uh, and had some different features that you couldn't get uh, with panels on the market. So light path LED, uh, there's a couple products in the product range. You have the full body panel here which of course I'll be reviewing today. He also has smaller tabletop and mini panels. With this body panel here, you actually have three different uh, options. You have a base model which has both your 660 and your 850 nanometer light. You have a multi-wave panel which has five wavelengths which we'll get into later in this video. And then you have the multi-wave pulsed which is what I have and that's what we'll be covering today. Price wise, uh, $1,174 for this top, top of the range multi-wave pulsed panel. Um, Discount code Alex, A-L-E-X, saves you 5%. Uh, if that doesn't work, check out the description below in case that code has changed. That saves you 5%, so that brings the price down to $1,155 for it. For a body panel with a lot of bells and whistles, uh, as we're going to see soon, uh, that, that's a good price. Shipping, we have free American shipping uh, for the main states in America. Though you can pay a few dollars extra, I think it's about 30 odd dollars or 40 dollars and, and get FedEx shipping. So that is a neat feature. Shipping to Australia, it's anything from 100 to 375 dollars depending on your exact location and what speed. Uh, shipping you want. Shipping for the UK ranges from $25 through to $285. This is based on the calculations I put in on the website at lightpathled.com and uh, shipping to Canada $25 through to $100. So the ship price to America after using my discount code is $1,115 US dollars which is a good price. Do Lightpath LED offer financing? No, not at the moment, though that may change. So uh, be sure to head over to Lightpath LED to check out um, if there's anything new over there. All right, next up, we're looking at the design and aesthetics. Lightpath LED ship their panels in branded boxes, which is always a good start. When a box turns up on the door and you don't see any branding on it and it's covered in foreign letters and foreign characters and you don't even know where it's coming from, it'll just have a warehouse in China. You always think, okay, here we go, this is probably just going to be a cheap sort of clone type product. That wasn't the case with Lightpath LED. They have um, the branding on the exterior box, you open that up and then you have another branded box inside which is always a good sign and a good start like I said. The panel itself is what I class as a body panel. It is 38 inches high, uh, 12 inches wide and 3 inches deep. So it is your typical body panel. On the website Lightpath LED claim that it will cover half of the body. A body panel is what a lot of people start out with when they get into the red light therapy space. You know it's around that thousand dollar mark. They know they can use it for a good treatment area of the body. Um, you can use it top half, bottom half, on the side, turn around. Uh, use it on the back as well. The panel itself is a solid metal case. There's no plastic in here. It's quite a decent weight. It's it's not overly heavy, but it's not one of the lighter ones either. It weighs 26 pounds, which is about 12 kilos. Uh, it is manageable. You know, most adults wouldn't have any issues lifting that up, you know, hanging it on a wall. Um, some panels I've tested are very heavy and, you know, obviously the larger the panel is very heavy and it becomes a two-man job or if it's for a, you know, elderly person, you, you're going to need some help. It doesn't have any hand grips or handles. Um, to be honest, not many panels do have those, but 
Uh, it is a nice feature when you do see that. So you do have these rubber feet, which can be used to lean against a wall and, and protect it a little bit. Of course, you can lift it from there. Um, obviously, you know, a guy, myself, who does a lot of weight training and stuff, uh, you know, it's easy to manage. But for some people, it is getting on the heavier side. On the back, we have four fans, and then you have your power points on the side and a, a main power switch on the back as well. Um, you can, it does have modular capability, so you can um, daisy chain in multiple panels and have it, all the power going to one one um, unit rather than having multiple cords going to your, your power points, which is good. You have screws on the top here for hanging these uh, pieces of wire with the loops on the end, and um, you can then hang that from the wall or from the included pulley system or the door hook. Or you can do what I do and uh, have a fixed hook on the back of my door and simply loop these over the hook. What is nice though is these chains at the top are a nice black color. I haven't seen that before. Typically they're just exposed wire. You know, that is a little bit different. Um, and that is just one of many things that is quite unique about the light path panel. Of course we have a silver case, a silver metal design here. Typically we see white. Uh, a few companies now have black panels and um, there are a few companies that do allow you to choose between red, silver, and black. Uh, Light Path don't have any color options, it's just your silver. Um, you know, silver's nice, it's, it's different. It's different to your standard white, which is um, the most common color, as I mentioned. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that color or the design itself as well. Nothing wrong with it. On the side there, you have some custom etching and logos on there, which is always nice to see. Um, and then the LEDs itself uh, split into three sections. What is interesting with the light path panel is the top section here actually has more near infrared uh, LEDs, your 810 I believe it is, because that is intended to treat more of the head and 810 nanometers is, has been shown to be most beneficial for brain health. So, um, you know, that's a cool little feature. Uh, at the very top here, we see the control panel. Now this is quite unique because I think all other panels I've ever reviewed have the control panel on the side um, or they have solid you know fixed buttons on the on the face and um, but this has a full control panel with buttons and the LCD screen on there which is quite unique and, and interesting and uh, we'll get into this shortly but it is a little bit frustrating to use we'll get to that soon though all right next up I want to look at setup and then operation so when we look at the setup to be honest Getting it out of the box, plugging it in is very straightforward. You have this power cable, you simply plug that into the back. It can only go in one hole, so that's very easy. And then plug that into your power. You will see there's power coming into the unit as this main switch is now illuminated. I will turn that on. And then it's just simply a matter of hitting the power button. So like I said, pretty straightforward to go from box to operating it. Um, of course, if you want to hang it, then you do have this pulley system with the hooks that clip onto the top wire, and then you can hang that and adjust the height. And you do have this door hook, which you can hang on the back of your door. So relatively straightforward. However, to get it going, uh, with the different features and different wavelengths and all that, that does get a little bit trickier. In fact, it was quite confusing the first time I did it, but I'll get to that soon. The cable itself is quite short. It came, in to be, it came in at 57 inches long, which is just under one and a half meters. But remember, if this is hanging from the back of the door or on a wall, and the top part here is focused at your head, um, I'm 178 centimeters high. So the plug is going in about this point on the back, that's not even going to reach the floor. And um, chances are you don't have a power point right behind where the panel is going to be hung, especially if it's going on the back of the door, which means you're going to need an extension cord. So, you know, it is on the shorter side. It would be good to see this around the two or three meter mark. I know not many companies do do that, but um, you know, it's one thing I wanted to mention. Now the Lightpath LED large panel doesn't come with any stands or anything like that. 
It does though, like I said, come with the door hook. The door hook is far too small for my doors here in New Zealand. Uh, the neat thing is though, it is a black design. I haven't seen that before. The other ones are typically just silver and it's got quite a nice feel to it. So, you know, that is nice. Um, with the door hook and the pulley system and these hooks on the top, you know, it is, you've got multiple options. Like I said, if you had a fixed hook or a screw on the wall, uh, you can simply hook them straight on or of course you can use the pulley system and adjust the height which is good if you want to do the top half of your body and then the bottom half half and you do also have the rubber feet as well if you do what i do and just simply lean it against the wall you know you've got a little bit of protection there so overall from from the box turning up to taking it out and getting it up and running relatively straightforward so to summarize the ease of use from a quick start point of view it is a little bit confusing i wouldn't necessarily be giving this to my granddad who might have a sore shoulder just because I'm it will do his head in trying to figure out how to work it uh, you know some panels just simply have a big power switch and away you go they don't even have a timer built in so from that point of view it is a bit tricky for an advanced user or someone who's happy to invest the time into reading the manual and, and, and learning the system hey it's it's quite a feature filled um, unit i mean you can do so much you can customize the frequencies every anything from two hertz right up to 9999 on on the unit itself plus you've got the remote you can select between red near infrared or both you've got the timer um, and you do have those preset um, pulsing functions as well it's not like you're learning a whole new computer system within a few sessions you get pretty good at uh figuring it out what I've found though is just use the remote. It's so much easier doing things through the remote than on here. It is a little bit disappointing though. You can't distinctly see the near infrared, whether the near infrared's working. That is a bit of a bummer. I'm sure there have been times when I've had this running and it's only been the red light, which like I said, is a bit of a bummer, but um, you know, you do figure it out. And now the reason why by default, the red light doesn't work, only the near infrared light is because if you enable the pulsing feature and it turns on, the pulsing feature is very intense, all right? So um, at least if you've enabled that and it's only the near infrared lights going, you don't get that instant, oh my God, what the hell's going on and potentially trigger like a headache or a migraine or a seizure or something if you're, if you're, suspect, if you're prone to those things. Um, so that's why it's been designed that way. Uh, so obviously if you set that up and you want to use the red light, then you have to manually go in and enable the red light. So I can see why they did that. It was a little bit confusing though the first time I turned it on, I was thinking, why is it only near infrared? Um, but yeah, that's why that's been done. Secondly, like to turn it on, like I said, you have to use the power button. You can set everything up with the frequency, with the time, and then you just leave it. And after five seconds, boom, everything, everything starts working. I'm not used to that, I'm used to hitting the power button and it's starting to work straight away. Which is why I do like this, because you can kind of over override those default command, um, default controls and just simply, you know, press the button and it works. So overall, operating this panel is a little bit confusing and tricky. And to be honest, it is one of the negatives of this panel. Scott is aware of this and he has said that um, there are some minor improvements coming out, but it's to totally change the control panel and the screen and all that is a big cost and a big um, big change from an engineering point of view. So he, what he's doing in the meantime is helping people with quick start guides and a quick five minute video that um, you'll be able to watch when you do get one of these panels. So at least he is aware of it and that is where those follow up calls, um, post purchase calls are also helpful as well because he can be on the phone and walk you through this, this unit and how to get the most out of it. All right, now for the exciting part of this review, we're gonna look at power and performance. First up, let's look at LED. So, as I mentioned before, this large multi-wave pulse panel by LightPath LED has 255 LEDs. So that's split into three sections, 85 in the top, 85 in the middle, and 85 at the bottom. Now, these are five watt LEDs with dual diode chips. So, first let's look at the five watt LED claim. So, Scott from LightPath LED has said that, yes, these are five watt LEDs, but they're only drawing 2.1 watts. Now, to put this in perspective, he said most panels that are using three watt LEDs only draw one to two watts. The five watt title, and again, this is from the LightPath LED website. I also recommend checking out the interview I had with Scott Kennedy, where he goes into this in a lot more detail. But um, the five watt figure is what the 
is what the actual dog can draw upon. Um, but because of inefficiencies and, and, and heat issues and whatnot, most LEDs are using a lot less than that 5 watt claim. This is why Scott claims that um, you know the marketing hype around 5 watt and 3 watt LEDs is um, is a little bit flawed. So, but still with the 5 watt LEDs, these should still be putting out some decent power. And we'll be testing this soon with the spectrometer. Now I mentioned that these are dual chip LEDs, which means that one LED has two chips in it, uh, two diodes effectively. This is quite new for the red light therapy space. I know that Juve Go uses this technology and there may be one or two other panels out there that do it. In my first impressions video, I was a bit confused because I, I, I just assumed that dual chip would mean that there'd be a red light chip and a near infrared light. Um, and that's why I thought all of them would be glowing when you turn it on, uh, no matter whether you're in near infrared or red light. It turns out this wasn't the case. Scott has informed me that yes, they are dual chip LEDs, but um, he uses two of the same wavelength in each chip. So for instance, if this LED in the corner here is running uh, 660 light, then there's two chips in there running both at 660 light. It's not one at 660 and one at 620. Um, so yeah, a little bit confusing. And in the interview I have with Scott, he explains the rationale behind this. So I'll put links to that below. You can go check that out. The 30 degree beam angle means that the light is focused on a narrower uh, treatment area which means as you go further back you're not losing that light off to the side some other companies have 60 degree beam angles uh, light path led have the 30 degree as for the wavelengths as this is the multi-wave panel uh, we have five wavelengths built into this panel the base light path large panel only has 660 and 850 the multi-wave has five leds uh, sorry has five wavelengths they have 620 and 660 in the red light therapy range and then 810, 850, and 930 in the near infrared range. The 810 has been shown to be beneficial for brain health. The 930 is quite unique because I haven't seen that in other panels. I don't believe any other panel goes above 900 nanometer lights. Scott has actually put more power, I think it's 60% of the power going to the near infrared LEDs and 40% going to the red light LEDs. Um, and this is because he f he believes and he's found that the, the near infrared light is more therapeutic and beneficial to the body, uh, whereas the red light is more beneficial to service treatment like wound healing. Uh, so he's he's changed a little bit. Uh, he's also said this is he's also said that the near infrared lights are actually more expensive to build uh, to use. So it has meant you know a more expensive unit, but he believes it's going to provide better results for the for the end user which is what we all want all right so what i'm going to do now is use my spectrometer and i'm going to test um to see what wavelengths are being emitted from these leds all right so i've just taken a snapshot of the um near infrared only um the panel going with near infrared lights only now um don't get too caught up in all these numbers because this wasn't a super accurate test, it was just to get a rough snapshot of what light is being emitted here. Uh, so you can see that first peak at, at 8.09, um, which is pretty much bang on, you're pretty much bang on your 8.10. The second one, which was the claim reading, the second one is peaking there around 8.52, 8.53, and then the third one over here at 8.53. 40. So these first two are, uh, match up with what was claimed, 810 and 850. This one here, there's actually more energy coming out at 940, um, whereas the marketed claim was 930. So there is a bit of a dif difference there. Uh, obviously, um, it's not end of the world because you're still getting a ton of power in the 930 range. And that is one interesting thing with this because these aren't lasers it's not like it's a straight line up at 930 and then nothing at 931 as you can see in this chart this is showing energy levels at different wavelengths you're still getting tons of um energy right through from tons of irradiance sorry right through from 790 through to your 830 through to 860 and then you get a bit of a drop here and then it starts picking up again around 920 through to you know 950 so that's quite interesting all right now we'll do the same for uh, the red light now we'll turn that off okay so on this screen you're seeing the peak at 634 is the is the absolute peak 
remember the claims are 620 and 660 so that's a little bit off 620 is coming back to down there which is which is half the power from 630 so that's a bit interesting let's see what this other peak is 658 658 and a half so that does match up with your 660 but yeah um claims of 620 and 660 that one there does a little bit off i'm just going to take a few more readings no and as you can see there's, there's a distinct pink at 660 which is good yeah so when you come over to the 620 which is what uh light path led claim i mean it's quite a low reading there the real peak is up around 630 to 640 640 is really where, where it's at so i'm not too sure what is going on there um but interesting nevertheless you are getting a ton of irradiance from 620 through to 670 though with these panels all right now for the really fun part we're going to test the irradiance which is the power output from these leds we're going to test it in the middle of the panel and we're looking for peak power in both the red light sorry the red range so your 600 660 nanometer and then we're going to do the same for the near infrared so your 800s um we're going to look for the peak the highest level of um the highest level that my monitor picks up at six inches or thereabouts uh, 15 centimeters i got a 15 centimeter rule here and we're looking for the milliwatt per centimeter square reading all right so that is across all the wavelengths so i'm going to just set it up for red and just test them likewise for near infrared so it doesn't necessarily mean well because we saw in those just on because we saw in the graphs with the wavelengths it's not a straight up and down line so we're actually looking at the light across all those wavelengths you know 620 621 622 all the way up okay um i can narrow in on a, one exact wavelength but i uh, it's typically not how I've recorded them and how most people record them. They're looking at the, all the light across the spectrum. If a lot of people really want to see exact readings for exact wavelengths, let me know because I think I can do this with this tool. Um, and it's just something I've never really dialed into before. But instead we're going to look at the total reading for red light and then total reading for near infrared light. Once we've done that, I'm going to calculate an estimated total power output for the full panel. And that will be taking nine readings across all wavelengths and um, trying to find a, a total estimated uh, output power. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the red light first. Um, unfortunately, the laptop software that I have doesn't show the total power, the radiance. I've gotta put it through Excel to get that figure, but it does show it on here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for the peak power, have the, have the lights running and uh, read out the peak power and I'll show you afterwards and then we'll do the same for near infrared. Okay, so let's do red light first. Okay, so we've got all this ready to go for red light. Got the ruler on for six inches. Uh, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to measure around this middle point. Just remember, not all of these lights are red LEDs. Some of them are near infrared. So you will see like peaks and troughs in terms of um, irradiance. Like if I hover over the cluster of near infrared lights, the red light is going to be so much, the red light reading is going to be so much lower. So I am going to move around. As I move around, I'll read out the numbers, all right? And then we'll, we'll take the peak. All right, let's go. So I'm going to turn this on, turn it on to red light only. Okay, where we go. Okay, so I'll, I'll read out some numbers to you. So and we'll move from one corner to the other. 26, remember these are milliwatt, milliwatts over centimeter squared. 39, 36, 32, 30, 38, 39, 39, we're in the 30s. I'll see if anything jumps up, drops down as I go down uh, over the near infrared. 41 there, still in the 30s, back in the 20s. 41 again, 42, 46, let's call it 46. All right, we'll turn this off. So you're looking at EE. There we go, 45.996. And the peak nanometer light there is 660.9. Um, so, yeah, that's quite a good reading. It's 46 milliwatts over centimeter squared. Remember, that's across that whole range. So, um, let's plug it into here. All right, so that's the red light, which is um, that's a decent reading. Now, what we're going to do is test it for uh, near infrared. So, remember, I'll read out the readings, the peak readings. Okay, so we're off 46, 49, <whistles> getting up there, 49, alright, let's see if I can 
Get that on. 50. We actually got a 50. So you're looking up there. That's a radiance. 50 milliwatts over a centimeter squared. Um, peak at the 853.7. And you're seeing the three peaks there. Obviously, uh, that particular reading was quite low in the 900s. Um, and this is where it gets interesting, right? Because this figure, when it, in my previous 2019 comparison, I just test, it was just 850 and 660, so you just have one reading. Now we've got multiple wavelengths, so it complicates things. Uh, you know, if I found another spot where the 950, uh, the, the 900 range was quite high, these might have been lower, and obviously the lower one would be a bit, the total radiance would be a bit lower. But um, hey, it's the best I can do, given all the variables at play here. So anyway. 50 uh, milliwatts, which is which is real high. That's for six inches. All right, so those are some pretty high power readings. What I'll be doing in future videos, I'm going to be doing this test uh, for all the panels that I can get my hands on, and plus I'm going to do a big comparison series where I'll directly compare all of these one after another. So be sure to subscribe for them, and you'll be able to see how they all do compare. What I'm also going to do is publish all the key figures from these reviews and comparisons over at alexfergus.com. So be sure to join on, uh, jump on my newsletter over there, and I'm going to update that every time I get more data points. All right, so you'll be able to go in there and just quickly search, hey, what's what's what panel has the best um, irradiance for red light? What panel has the best um, near infrared light irradiance? What panel is, has the most LEDs, for instance? So be sure to head over to alexfigures.com, get on my newsletter. Also, stay tuned here on YouTube as well because I'll be putting out more uh, videos in the coming weeks and months. Next up, I want to look at estimated total power output. And I say estimated because I have to do some uh, calculations here. What I'm going to do is take nine points, nine readings for total irradiance, all right? Um, I'm going to take Six readings around the perimeter, just coming in one LED. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, two at the bottom, and then I'm gonna take three through the middle here, all right? What I'm gonna do is then average out those readings and multiply it by the area of the LEDs, and we're gonna get an estimated total power output. Okay, let's do this now. And remember, this is for both near-infrared and red light. Alright, I've taken those nine readings and it averaged out to be 58.7 milliwatts over centimeter squared. So now I'm going to measure the total area. 25.82. Now I should mention this is far from a perfect science. There are so many variability, uh, so many variables at play here. Um, and I know from a direct comparison point of view, it's it's probably not going to be great either because of the layout of LEDs and everything. But hey, um, you know, it's gonna give you a rough idea if something's good power or high power or good value for money. Um, but it's not perfect, all right. Beside a blog, we will have more data points coming in in time, so we'll be able to compare that. But uh, those figures are looking good. They are up there in terms of um, high irradiance, which is what I, I was expecting since there are 5 watt LEDs in here. Alright, next up I actually want to look at power, power draw here. So I've got a power meter, I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to see what the light path LED large panel is drawing. So let me plug this in. Alright, so the unit's on, that top number is watts. So the unit is on but uh, none of the lights are going so it's already drawing 19 watts. I'm going to turn it on now. And this is near infrared only going. So we're at 400 watts, just over 400 watts there for um, for the near infrared lights. Now I'm going to hit red light and turn them both on. So we've got red and near infrared. And we're at 766 watts. And then when I just do red, we are at 386. All right, so I included that wattage draw figure just because uh, I know some people are interested in this and are curious to know what's going on. Uh, obviously that number, don't read it too much into that because 
as you saw without any lights going there was already a wattage draw uh, some of that some of that energy is going to control to power the control panel of course you've got the fans that are running you have lost energy as heat and all of those sort of, sort of things I only wanted to include this because some people uh, do want that information and I figured hey I've got the gear here I can test it anyway to round out the power and performance category the last thing I want to talk about is um, pulsing now this is where the light path LED multi-wave pulse panel is very 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 interesting so if you've seen my first impressions video or if you've watched the video my interview with Scott Kennedy from light path then you probably know what I'm going to say here this panel has inbuilt pulsing what that means is the light flickers at a predefined rate now you can customize this flicking this this pulsing from zero Hertz which is no flicking uh, right through to 9999 effectively 10,000 times a second 10,000 um, pulses a second which you wouldn't pick up with your naked eye Scott what he has done is he has programmed in some preset uh, pulsing rates and now these are based on the Nogier Nogier frequencies which again I'm not going to get into here because I want to keep this more about the product and not all the other science out out there about red light therapy and pulsing so I highly recommend heading over to lightpathled.com to ch check out um, the articles on the Nogier frequencies or watch my uh, interview with Scott and I'll put a link to that below a French scientist found that different rates of pulsed light had uh, different healing modalities on the human body and uh, not just the human body in fact uh, it's, this is also being widely used in um, animal veterinary health and all the, and other areas of health so the research on this is lacking and it's it's still you know a lot of people may see this as fringe and woo-woo but hey I used to think the same about red light therapy and uh, now you know I'm using it multiple times a week and it's it's totally a game changer so this is an area that it's it could be seen as a massive positive massive plus for this light path panel or it could also be seen as a bit of a gimmick and you're paying for something that may not do anything at all the great thing is as a biohacker as someone who is keen to improve my health and happy to experiment I like the idea that this feature is here and I can try it and I can use it on my body and, and to help heal injuries and recover from gym sessions and see what happens and if it doesn't if it doesn't help then hey I know for me it didn't work the other cool thing is if you head over to light path LED and you want to buy one of these panels you don't have to get that feature you can save a couple hundred dollars drop down and get the multi-wave five wavelength panel in this size without the pulsing feature and you save a couple hundred dollars so I know this is probably leaving you thinking well does it work is it worth it now this is where it gets tricky I don't know I've been using it for a couple weeks now I've played around with different settings I've played around with some of the Nogia frequencies I've put in some of my own custom pulsing rates um, and it's not like I walk away from the session thinking oh my god I am a totally different person however I haven't had any real injuries or health issues or even really big gym sessions over the last few weeks so it's hard to really quantify that I also wasn't wearing any wearables as I was going through a uh, long story anyway I have no data to sort of quantify it uh, which is a bit of a bummer I do think it is interesting though and I do like the idea of I do like how it has been built into this panel because again it is something new and this is what's cool about the light path panels there's new novel ideas there's new features it's not just another clone there's there's fresh ideas here there's neat technologies um, but best of all it empowers the user the person who owns it to experiment to play around with it and like Scott says if data comes out showing that 300 Hertz for five minutes applied on the you know on the on the skin rapidly and uh, heals I don't know sunburn or something like that then hey you can go in you can set that use it and away you go which is really really cool um, however there, I say all this and I say that the science is lacking but there are massive amounts of case studies and anecdotal evidence where um, where people have used pulsing to their advantage and likewise with vets using it for animal health and you know stuff that comes out of the veterinary science is quite interesting because an animal can't really doesn't really fall for the placebo effect it doesn't know if it's getting pulse light or not uh, the vet just sees if, if something is working or it doesn't work so 
those data points are quite interesting. Now accessing these features is a little bit tricky and again this goes back to the ease of use. Uh, now again this goes back to the complications I had using this control panel. But let me show you exactly how it works. I'm going to do it on my remote here because it's just easier. When we turn the unit on, as we see on this side, it says off. Next to that screen is a button saying frequency and mode. What I can do is I can hit the mode button, like I'm, I'm going to do it on the remote because it's easier, and you'll see it comes up 2.5 and it flashes. If I hit that again, oh, <laughs> I'm, still I'm still having issues with this. If I hit that button again, it will go to 000, zero, zero alright? That mode allows me to customize what frequency I want. So I can set it to anything I want. Um, if I leave it in this first setting, I can press this Hertz button and it will scroll through the Nogia frequencies that are preset into this panel. So everything from 2.5 Hertz, 10, 40, 73, right up to, I think it's 4,698. Now if I want to run one of these, let's run 73. I just leave it for a few seconds, I think it's 5 seconds, and it will kick in. Now, only near infrared light is running. You cannot see, you probably can't see the flicker, I can hear it at the moment. If I press red light, the red light's going to flicker at 73 times a second. I don't know if they'll be visible to our eyes, but let's have a look. I should note that if you're prone to seizures or, you know, uh, flicking lights can trigger a health issue, um, skip ahead 30 seconds or so all right okay so there we go that is pulsing at 73 times a second i can briefly make it out uh, apparently above 80 you don't really notice it uh, optically let me show you how it works at the lowest setting so this is two and a half hertz we're going to leave it just on the infrared so we wouldn't be able to see it too much all right but you can see those lights pulsing right and you can actually hear the drivers running there now i'm going to turn this on to red Again, if, if you're prone to seizures or anything like that, just fast forward from this point because um, this is pretty intense. And in fact, the manual actually says to use it in the infrared or if you're going to put it in red light, put your goggles on because this is pretty crazy. All right, I've warned you. All right, that's it's nuts. I think you do sort of adjust to it, but it's, um, it is pretty full on. Now, like I said, you have the preset... No GF, no, GF, no GA frequencies in there, um, but you also have the custom one, and again, you can use it on red or near infrared or both. Now, I spoke to Scott about this in our recent interview, and he actually said um, using the near infrared is probably all you need uh, because that light is penetrating deeper into the body. So that is cool. You don't, you can use it without having the flashing lights and you know the strobe light light effect. But also, if you go right up to one of the high frequencies, you know, like 500 or even higher than that, you're not going to notice that flickering anywhere. So that's a 500 there. So you can't even pick up on it. Again, I don't know too much about it. I am still getting my head around all this. The manual does do a good job of explaining what frequency does what. Uh, you know, you'd use fre fre you'd use frequency F, which is 73 hertz for balancing of hormones, muscle spasms, headaches, depression, those sort of things. You'd use frequency A, which is 294 for um, skin health and teeth and stuff like that. So it's, it's really something that you need to experiment with and you need to research and um, you need to decide whether you want that feature or not because again, you can get the same panel with the multi-wave and you don't have to have that, that pulsing feature. You can save a few hundred dollars. Cool thing is though, if you do decide to get this panel with the pulsing features, you will get that uh, post um, purchase call with Scott and you'll be able to talk to him about you know your health needs what you're doing Maybe you're an athlete and you're trying to recover faster or you've got an old injury He will then tell you what he recommends to use you know what pulsing frequency Duration time and all of that if you have watched my interview with Scott You would have heard him say what sort of frequency or pulsing rates He does recommend just as a general overview and um, if you don't want to go back and watch that interview I did drop them down here and he said 40 hertz is, is well-known healing frequency for brain 
health and not only if you have brain issues but preventive preventative and 147 hertz is generally used for inflammation he also said just like anything in life start small start low slow so don't do 20 minutes at one of those frequencies you know do one or two minutes have a few days off do it again and work your way up so that's something that i'm going to try i'd love to say oh my god this frequency just totally changed my life i don't really have enough to, i don't really have enough data points or enough time using them i've just been more playing around with the panel and getting used to it and doing the odd session here or there i will keep using this on a longer term and hopefully over you know in the coming months i will be able to do an update and say hey look this is amazing or maybe i didn't notice anything at all but potentially it could be a massive game changer not only for red light therapy but for biohackers and for health and wellness and um also most importantly for for your health which is hey why we're here why we're watching this and doing all this right we want to improve our health so yeah, a very neat feature and another reason why, you know, this uh, light path panel is, is quite intriguing. All right, next up I wanna look at uh, safety and um, usability of this panel. So here I'm gonna look at the sound output, I'm gonna look at the flicker rate and uh, anything else I should mention. So first things I can say is it's not FDA approved. Some panels coming to the market are, this one isn't. All right, we have a background sound rate of 36 and a half decibels. Gonna turn it on, and it's up to 52 and a half. All right, now we're gonna look at flicker. All right, now we're gonna look at EMF levels. Uh, we're gonna look at magnetic, electric, and uh, microwave. I don't expect there to be any microwave um, readings with this because there's no Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Uh, so we'll check that first real quick. Then we're gonna do magnetic and electric at both three inches and six inches. And I'll be using my Cornet Electromog electro smog meter um i'll put a link to this in the show notes below all right the first thing i looked at was the uh, microwave now um this is your wi-fi and, and cell phone now the only time there was a bit of a spike was when i used this because this is sending a brief signal to this unit it was very minuscule there was a little bit of movement on here we're turning it on but it was yeah i mean it was nothing I don't know, I think it was just the electronics and, and obviously there's a bit of a receiver in this panel, but nothing to be worried about. Let's look at the uh, magnetic field now. So I'm gonna set this up for six, in six inches from the middle, which is about there. And I've positioned it that way because the sensor's on this side for this particular reading. So that unit is currently off. It's off at the wall. I'm going to turn it on now. And we do see a bit of a spike there. Well, we see a bit of movement, but it's gone back to green. We want it in the green. That's your safe standard by the um, building biology standards. So, yeah, that's cool. That's off. Now what we're going to do is turn it on. That's red light and then for red. And there is a little bit of movement there. Uh, it might be hard to see, but we're at point two. Micro Teslas, I believe it is, uh, which is on the bottom bottom level of um, orange, which is your cautious sort of zone, which is not too bad. As we get closer to the panel, it does get up to about 0.7. It's still relatively low. Some panels are lower, but some panels are much higher. So not hugely concerning, um, but I guess you could say it could be better. Now we're going to look at electric fields. That is currently on electric field and it's a background level of 10 volts per meter, I think it is, um, which is rock bottom. Now we're gonna turn that on and fire it up. And a very small movement and then it dropped back down 11. So there are no issues there, which is good. So overall, I'm gonna say this panel is safe. There is nothing alarming about the EMF levels there small amount of uh, your magnetic field especially as you get a little bit closer but still it was quite low on the cautious zone in here um, it's nothing dangerous all right now that we've got a bunch of metrics out there around power and price what i wanted to do is a quick value section here i want to look at two things the price per led and also price per watts in regards to how many watts this is putting out. So the price per LED is simple. I just took the discounted price, which is $1,115, and divided that by the amount of LEDs that this panel has. And that worked out to be a price of $4.37 per LED. 
Again, we're going to be comparing these over on the website and, and future reviews, so stay tuned for them. Because right now you're probably thinking, so what? But yeah, all of this data will, will be useful in time. Secondly, I also calculated the dollar per watt output. So remember we took the overall, it's an estimated figure, the estimated overall wattage output by doing nine measurements, averaging them, and then taking the surface area size. Um, so that was 120.3 watts. Now I did the math just now, that works out to be $9.26 per watt so that's what you're paying per watt of uh, output so this is going to be an interesting data point obviously we will expect the bigger units to um have a better value per wattage score uh, but hey it's another metric you can use when shopping for red light therapy panels now before i wrap up i hope this review has been useful and i hope it's helped educate you in terms of whether you should spend your money on lightpath led i wanted to compare it with the other lightpath panels but also some of its competitors so, in regards to the other panels from Lightpath LED, like I said, you can get a standard, you can get this size in standard 660 and 850 nanometer light. That particular panel is $400 cheaper, so it's about $720, so that's a big saving. Or, you can get the multi-wave, the five wave, uh, the five wavelength panel without the pulsing for um, $824, so that's about $300 less than this. Which is actually really good value for what you're getting, a high-powered, low EMF, Good size red light therapy body panel it's up to you though whether you want to spend that extra three hundred dollars and have a go at pulsing remember though light path led do have that trade-up policy so you could start with the base unit or even a smaller unit and if you wanted to later on you know send it back and get one of those bigger units if you do want the pulsing feature but you are on a strict budget then you could get the tabletop version which is only um a third of the size of this i think it comes with about 94 leds remember this one's 255 you can get that in multi-wave with pulsing but that is 774 dollars for an extra 400 dollars you can get the full one so i mean yeah you could say if you're on a tight budget and you want the pulsing go with the smaller one but i'd argue you're better off saving a few more dollars and uh getting the full size one in regards to other panels out there from different companies, three companies came to mind here. We have the Mito Mod Pro, uh, which is a very similar in terms of power specs with their 5 watt LEDs. They've also got multiple wavelengths, um, but they have more LEDs and they come in at a lower price point. But they don't have the pulsing though. Secondly, you have the Platinum LED Biomix panels. Now these won my 2019 body uh, comparison panel. Rumor is they're bringing out a new panel anytime soon now. Based on their older generation or their current generation panels, um, they also do multi-wavelength and they also have high powered and uh, similar specs from a you know pure power output point of view. They also have great EMF and flicker and all those sort of things as well. Um, they don't have the pulsing though, but again, the price is... If you're seriously considering this, it is worth looking at alternatives. I guess it keeps coming back to the pulsing feature though. That is the standout, of, standout feature of this panel. Now speaking of pulsing though, there is one other company out there who does offer a pulsing panel. And that is Juve, with their Juve Solo. It's their new third generation um, panel range. And that actually does include a pulsing feature. However, it's not as advanced or as comprehensive as the light path pulsing feature. The Juve pulsing feature is limited to one frequency, and that is 10 hertz, and it only works for the near infrared light. I wonder if they've restricted this just because of the intensity of the flickering red light. But anyway, they use that as their recovery plus mode, so it's designed for sports performance recovery. Um, I have got that panel, and I have used a little bit, and again, I, I haven't really quantified it enough to say whether it works or not. But the thing is, you can... You, uh, and I know, sorry, I know Juve do have some uh, studies on their website that they believe uh, shows that it does work. But the cool thing is, you can use 10 hertz on here as well with both red light or near infrared. Or of course, you can use any other frequency from 0 through to 10,000. The problem with Juve versus the light path panel is the Juve panel is very, very expensive. Plus, you're getting less LEDs. I think it is 150 LEDs and you're spending more money than this. So... As a trade-off, Juve do have some pretty neat features though, and I will be reviewing all of those panels I just mentioned in the coming weeks and months. And plus, I'll be comparing them all directly in one big video, so be sure to subscribe for that. So, that's a wrap. I'm, I think I've covered everything I can think of in regards to this light path LED panel. I guess now you want to hear my concluding thoughts. Well, well, I do like how it's new. It's something different. It's, it's not a carbon copy of, 
a lot of the other panels out there there's a new, unique design a unique control panel not saying it works great but it is unique the pulsing feature is very very cool though again does it work is it worth the money i'm not too sure uh it is good power there is good emf ratings um and all of that as well plus the after sale support you get with scott and the trade-up policy do make light path led quite an in interesting um interesting company and uh you know i think a lot of people will be spending their money with this company because of those things i just mentioned when you break it down from a pure value point of view it is also really good value uh, if you are super tight on money and looking more for a budget version you can skip the pulsing feature and get one of the base models in this large panel and again that brings the price down the average price down so much more so value wise even for the top pulsing panel which i have here i think it's still really good because like i said you're getting all those extra features such as the 20 minute follow-up call the trade-up policy three-year warranty uh plus you've got that pulsing feature built in if if it turns out that hey this frequency works amazing for a certain health condition and you have that health condition i mean that's going to be money well spent but there are downsides as well as you've noticed it is quite confusing to use even after months of using this on a regular basis i still struggle to get things set up it's not a deal breaker i mean eventually you get what you want uh, but it might cause a bit of frustration and when you compare this to some other panels that are quite simple to use and you can flick a switch and away you go and you know you get exactly what you want you know some people might be put off for this i suppose it really depends what you are what you're wanting as a person are you more of an advanced buyer well are you more of an, a biohacker who wants to experiment and have all these cool technologies that can potentially help you help with your health and well-being then yeah this you're going to put up with that the, those frustrations and go with something like this or are you buying a panel for you know your mother or your grandmother who's got like arthritis or something and you just want to expose them to red light therapy and you want to make it super simple in that case you know you 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 may look elsewhere and you may not be too worried about multi-wave technologies and 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 the pulsing and the very confusing control panel but overall though i think it is a really good panel and i'm really excited to see how some of these numbers which we have calculated today is going to stand up with these other panels that i'm going to be testing and comparing it to in the coming weeks and months i think i wouldn't be surprised if it does really really well i mean it's got a good price you've got no emf issues um, you've got high power output, you've got multiple wavelengths, which I think is a big plus. You've got awesome support, awesome warranty, um, and did I mention value as well? I think it is good value, it's a good price. Uh, and so overall, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a good panel. Whether it's worth spending the extra money for the pulsing, that is the big question. I think something that I don't have the answer to yet, and it really comes down to you and your research and your knowledge and your finances, I guess. Uh, but hopefully in the coming months i'll be able to continue using this and uh hopefully i'll be able to update you with with more feedback and thoughts on the pulsing feature i should also mention you should check out my other footage uh, including the interview i had with scott where he talks about some of these pulsing technologies and i am planning a follow-up interview with him later this year and if you have any questions for him leave them below or leave them on the other video and i'll be sure to ask him if you do decide to get one of these panels be sure to use discount code Alex, A-L-E-X. It will save you 5%, I believe. If that code doesn't work, check the description below because it may have changed. Um, I do get a small kickback from that, but that helps me do these videos and get the gear that you've seen me playing with today and, of course, bring you all this information. But most importantly, be sure to subscribe and head over to alexfigures.com and jump on the newsletter there because I will be comparing this panel with all my other panels that I have here and uh, that's going to be something really awesome to, to watch. And that should bring even more information and help help you make more of an informed decision when it comes to buying a red light therapy device. If you have any questions, leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And also, this is the first time I've done a real deep dive review like this on any red light therapy panel. If you enjoyed it and you want to see me do this on other panels, let me know. It has taken me a whole day to film this, and that's before we edit it and, and do all the notes. So it has been a lot of work. Uh, but if you want me to do this on, say, the Juve Solo, the new Biomax panels when they come out, you know, just let me know and um, I'll, I'll do my best to uh, get them out to you.